As I always say, the easiest money in ministry to raise is money to send young adult missionaries to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel. I say that out of authority because I've raised over $10 million for, for our Dale Global. And our Dale, the organization that I lead, has raised well over $20 million. And our primary role is to send young adult missionaries to the ends of the earth. So the first step was to create a list of potential partners. Now it's really important to understand that that list of potential partners is exactly that, partners. We're not raising money. We're not asking people to give us money. We're not taking people's hard earned dollars. We are building a partnership with others to enable us to go to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel. So just touching on that for a moment. It's clear in the Bible, and Paul even talks about churches and individuals supporting his mission. He, he said it was vital that the churches support the mission that he was doing. In order for the gospel to spread, there has to be a goer and there has to be a sender. And, and we have seen through ministry that not only does God call people to go, but he calls people to send. And if the goer is not obedient in, in engaging the sender, then we're missing half of the Great Commission. Let that sink in for a moment. So if God has called you to go to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel, he is calling you to invite senders to come alongside you. So the list that we talked about in step one are people who you are going to invite to become a partner with you in ministry. Don't think about it in terms of, of asking for money or raising money. That's where our own uh, psychological blocks come into effect. Think about it as building a team to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And you will be surprised, mark my words, at how many people you ask to become a partner with you in ministry that will thank you for approaching them. Mark my words, after you've done it, don't say it isn't gonna happen. After you've done it, come back and let's talk about it. I wanna hear your stories. So now on to step number two. Step number two is mark your calendar. Now, if you don't use a calendar, as an organized person, I really suggest you start. Um, in order to be effective in ministry, you really do need to have appointments and honor those appointments and, and, and be committed to, to a schedule. Um, if you do use a calendar, I wanna give you an illustration. Let's say you won the lottery, got a million dollar prize that's coming in, and you had to show up at such and such a time, at such and such a place for three weeks in a row in order to claim your prize. Would you mark that down and would you double check it the night before and would you set an alarm? Would you make sure that you were there? I want you to treat this step just like that. Anything that is so important in your life that you can't skip it, this is how you need to treat it. So what you need to do is create a schedule on your calendar. And when you create little blocks of time to sit down and talk with these prospective supporters, honor that time as if you were winning the lottery because in a sense, you will be. These people are going to fund your ministry, so make this a priority. The first step that you need to do is you need to find times that you think are going to work for your supporters. Don't find just the time that works for you, but find the time that is a great time to talk to them. In general, in the evening, during the week, when people are working is the best time to schedule these, these sessions. It can be over a meal, it can be over coffee, uh, but I do recommend that it always be in the home, but we'll talk about that in the next step. In this step, carve out time on your calendar that number one, you think is gonna fit for your audience, for your people, and you know them, so you know that though they're available on Tuesday, but not on Wednesday, and so you can block times out. But set enough blocks in your calendar to where you can sit down with every one of the 50 people on your list, and I'm not joking, one-on-one. -on -one. It's okay if you do lunch meetings, or if you do breakfast meetings, or if you do coffee meetings, or if you do dinner meetings. It's okay if you do three or four in a day. It's okay if you do five on Saturday. Well, that might be a bit much, but it's okay to do some on Saturday, Sunday after church, Sunday before church, uh, after a life group or a small group or whatever, but just block off times on your calendar to where you can get to everybody. So the second rule of that is make sure it's a time that you can do it. Make sure that you're putting in the amount of time that you can afford to put in. If you're still working, you have to factor that in. It's gonna take you longer to get to everybody, but factor that in. So this step is very, very important before we move on to the next step. I hope that this was helpful.